Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hannah, and today I am going to be presenting about my project, which is called Hydroclimate Model Optimization in Three Distinct Chilean Climates, which I'm realizing right now is a pretty long title, but I'm hoping by the end of this presentation, you guys have a good clue of what my project is all about and why this is an exciting thing to be researching here in Chile. So, as a quick overview, um, I'm going to be going over the background and kind of motivation behind this project first, and then go over an overview of the project itself, and then follow up with some of the challenges that I'm foreseeing. So, to start simply, I have a background in hydrology. You guys have probably all at some point in your life seen this beautiful hydrology diagram of the water cycle. Um, and that is what I study. Basically, hydrology consists of trying to understand how each little component of the water cycle interacts with each other to make up the whole water, the whole water system in, on the earth as well as the atmosphere. So with this background in hydrology, you might ask, why is this important to study? Um, well, I can name a few reasons. Um, first of all, I'm interested in particular in water quantity and predicting water quantity. And with a better background in hydrology and understanding how the water system works, we can both predict better, predict more accurately water quality and water quantity. And with that, um, have a better way of predicting extreme weather events related to water, such as the flooding that's taking place here, that took place here in 2015 in northern Chile. Um, with that, you can also consider extreme weather events, such as hurricanes, um, which we are all very familiar with in the United States. Um, another reason that this is an interesting project to be working on right now is we're seeing water patterns changing right now. Um, as the global mean temperatures are increasing and the greenhouse gases are increasing in our atmosphere, those have huge impacts for the water cycle. So this in particular is a great time to be studying water and how these changes are going to be implementing society, impacting society. Um, with that, I'm motivated by, by hydrology, thinking about the various ways that it affects society. So um, just looking at a few of these uh, news, news headlines, um, you can see that hydrology and water has huge impacts economically, socially, and of course environmentally. So these things all um, stand out to me and make me interested in studying water and how it's going to impact people. So why hydrology in Chile? Um, Chile, as you all know, is long. <laughs> so it, with this, uh, it has some pretty interesting geographic characteristics that makes studying water and the water cycle here um, a really cool place to be. So. Um, being a really long country, spanning over a multitude of latitudes, um, you can see that there are a lot of climates. So if you split Chile, it's so long that you have to have two different diagrams just to see this. Um, but if you split it into the northern chunk and the southern chunk, uh, you can see that each little color here represents a different climate, which is crazy. So those climates span over what you see as more arid climates in the north, more temperate climates in the central region where we are now, and then down in the south, polar climates. So the variation across all of those is um, very vast. And with that, that makes this country a really cool place to study how climate and hydrology change all in, within the same country. So that brings me to my project which is going to be looking at a hydroclimate model and um, how that hydroclimate model works over different climates in Chile. So when you break down hydroclimate, that's referring to the terrestrial water, which looking back at this beautiful hydrology diagram is referring to all of the water that is on Earth, whether that's in the form of snow, lakes, rivers, oceans, water in living bodies such as vegetation, and subsurface water and groundwater, um, and then how that water interacts with atmospheric water, which is where the climate part of hydroclimate comes into play. So um, 
With that in mind, my objective here is to apply a hydroclimate model to different sites in Chile that all represent vastly different climates. So the model that I'm choosing to work with here is called WARF Hydro. Um, and WARF stands for Weather Research and Forecasting Model, and then the hydro part isn't a cool acronym, it just means the hydrological model part of WARF Hydro. So anyways, what's great about WARF Hydro is um, it allows us to work with two models in one, one being the atmospheric water part of the model, and then one being the terrestrial hydrological model. And working with those two in one, it allows us to more accurately be able to predict water quantity because we can see how those two water bodies are interacting with each other. So um, that's, that's great. <laughs> and also some other things that are great about Wharf Hydro is that it has global potential. So Wharf Hydro uh, is a model that we can see being applied to all different parts of the world. Um, and additionally, another great, great thing about it is it's open source and um, is a community model. So it allows for a lot of room for collaboration. So um, my plan in my project is to pick three sites. Um, these are kind of random pictures. I haven't picked the sites yet. But um, <laughs> this is kind of what they will, where they will be. One of them will be up north, representing the arid climate. Um, in the Atacama Desert, and then one of them will be here in the metropolitan region, representing the temperate climate, and then one down south. Um, I'm not sure how south it'll be yet, whether it'll represent the polar climate or not, but um, these will all, as you can see, span a vast range of different climates and allow us to see how wharf hydro is working in these different climates. So, um, at each of these sites, uh, I, will be, I will be visiting all of the sites and then um, keeping track of the key site characteristics um, that will be used to better parameterize the model. Um, so that includes things such as looking at terrain, vegetation, even talking to people about historic flooding, um, and then keeping note, of course, of man-made changes in these watersheds. Um, and then within each site have a stream gauge and a meteorological gauge which allow us to compare the wharf hydro outputs with historically what's happened there um, and then have, be able to have a clue on how well we're able to run this model, how accurate this model runs in these various sites. So some of the outputs include um, precipitation, snowpack, stream flow, and inundation. Um, and I'm planning on focusing mostly on precipitation, stream flow, and inundation because um, snow can get a little tricky. But um, with this in mind, I'm hoping to answer um, the following research questions. First of all, how well does Wharf Hydro perform with respect to each different climate? That's kind of the main goal of this. Um, does it perform better, for example, in the northern climate where it's very dry, or in the, in the central region, or southern, or is it kind of the same across all climates? That's important information for us to know when we want to use warp hydro in the future. Um, with that in mind, what are the key, if it's performing better in a certain way, what are the key parameters in each different climate that are important for us to keep in mind in order to optimize the model and get it to give us the best predictions of water quantity. And then based on this, um, I'm interested, where else can this model be applied globally? Um, one example is, of this is, I'm from the Western United States, and there's a lot of climate similarities between the Western United States and Chile. Um, so it's an awesome opportunity for collaboration bet between the two places, um, where we're both bordered by a mountain range on the eastern side, and then the Pacific Ocean on the western side, and being about similar, in certain places, similar uh, distances from the equator. So uh, that makes some climate similarities that will be interesting in future, in future years to compare with the United States, um, as well as other parts of the world too, if we see that it's functioning better in a certain climate over another climate. So there's always challenges. Um, I think my biggest challenges are gonna be, come, from, come from the data scarcity and uncertainty. Um, as we know, there's never enough data, and there's, it's never accurate <laughs> enough. But um, I, think that, I think that with collaboration 
and um, with having being flexible in ways in which I acquire the data, um, I'll be able to cover enough to have a good comparison with the model outputs. And then, of course, when you're doing any modeling, uh, there's always complexities and technical challenges that end up taking a lot of time. So I'm predicting all of these things to be uh, challenges in the future. But um, with the collaboration at La Catolica, where I'm working, um, I'm hoping that these can be overcome, and this will be a really cool project to work on. So yeah, that wraps it up. Thank you guys. Um, here's a pretty sunset picture for your viewing pleasure. Um, thank you for listening, and please, please, any questions?